This is a micro circulation unit. The red side is where the uh, blood cells are coming from the heart carrying oxygen and uh, the blue side is where the oxygen uh, has been removed from the cells and the cells are going, the red blood cells are going back to the, to the lungs to drop off carbon dioxide, pick up oxygen, come around again to go produce a tissue. You have, a, I say this again, this is very, very important, these numbers, you have 600,000 miles of microcirculation unit capillary beds in the body. These are the critical areas for dropping off oxygen and keeping you alive in this planet. If you are interfering with flow of blood and blood cells through these microcirculation units, you are interfering with oxygenation and toxin removal uh, from the body. It's, it's acid-base balances in very small areas, and it, we call that the pH or potential hydrogen. Uh, uh, hydrogen. It's basically how we measure acid-base balances in the body. We cannot see this in a peripheral blood sample we do from your arm in the doctor's offices because what's happening here is not a reflection of what's happening down here. These capillary beds represent 95% of the blood, supply, blood vessels in your body. They only contain 5% of the circulating blood at any given time. 95% of the blood is outside of these areas, and these areas are the crucial areas for, for life function and sustaining health and wellness. Messing up flow here, and uh, the, all of the system may look together as a whole when we look at it as doctors, like looking at blood pressure or looking at your blood in these big large pipes, but we cannot see down in these areas, and these areas are critical. It's kind of like oh, we're, this area here is like the forest, and all we've been looking at a lot as physicians is the trees, because that's all we can do is see trees, and uh, this is critical. So as blood flows through these areas, uh, some channels can, can become temporarily blocked. They have little sort of uh, elastic bands that can close them off, in certain areas, uh, redistribute distribute, uh, blood flow to other areas as well. But the critical thing is, if you start the pressure differential between the, the blue side, the, the, the uh, venous side, and the red side, the arterial side, there's a very small pressure differential between there, but the pressure on the venous side is lower than the arterial side, so blood keeps flowing that way. If you start clogging things up, and the white blood cells will do this under hyperstimulation on the blue side, then you have backup of pressure and changes the pressure differential and blood will actually flow backwards. And that means you're not getting any oxygen to tissue. And for the brain, that's very, very critical because the brain can only go four minutes without oxygen before you start having irreparable damage that impairs function. Uh, we used to think it is irreparable, but we'll have some tricks for that down the road as well. Um, uh, anyway, so this microcirculation unit is critical and blood sludging and slowing of blood flow is happening in these small areas when not affecting the rest of the body and we're completely oblivious to it. We call it aging, we call it disease, we call it disorders, we call it a whole gamut of uh, damages to human physiology and dogs and cats because the same thing happening with humans with vaccines also happening to our companion pets and we have all that data too and we'll show that to you in a future series. So the damage caused to the brain from the sludging process leading to autism and Asperger's and ADHD and, and sudden death, uh, we've called it uh, uh, um, mass disconnection syndromes. Uh, and disconnection syndrome is when the, the various tracks in the body are actually um, what, like cables, like Christmas-like cables. They're spanning through all over the place, so the brain has cables going within it on one side, between the two hemispheres this way, going down to the nerves of the face, going down to the nerves of the body, and going up the other way. These long cables, uh, they are the conduits through which electrical charge is passed down to let the electrical chemical signals go to make you move, think, process information, uh, connect with the world, speak, touch, taste, hear, uh, have your balance, know where you are in space, track things in the environment, all these functions, including uh, the functions of walking, talking, sitting, standing, development, if you will, all these functions are critical to unfolding based on these connected cables. When you have small blood sludging in some of these small blood vessels, you end up not having any oxygen to some of these small cable areas. You get little nicks on these cables, kind of like short wiring a uh, bunch of the lights for your Christmas lights and you have lights not lighting up the way they're supposed to and the right sequence they're supposed to do some will not light up at all and uh, some of them you can't get the signal down to them and by example not being able to speak after a stroke in an adult or these autistic children uh, the cables are disconnected because the small areas of we say in medicine called anoxia 
which is a fancy word of saying no oxygen, the no oxygen to that area has changed its, its, uh, its acid-base balance, it's changed its oxygenation, and it's lacked, the tissue doesn't have the oxygen to perform its functions, and you have little cuts in the cables, and they cannot perform their function. You're basically cut off from the rest of an integrated way of working in the world, which is autism and many of these different disorders. Tissue can die, tissue can degenerate, tissue can not form, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, areas can be disconnected from each other, which is pretty much much of the symptoms we see in the autism spectrum and neurodevelopmental community. We've called it the mass maze, and mass maze basically means um, the mass anoxia spectra syndromes, which is mass, and anoxia means lack of oxygen, and a maze is, we call that mass anoxia, lack of oxygen, uh, zeta encephalopathies, and zeta is another piece of the problem here in terms of the electrostatic charge of particles in your body. They're very critical as a function of what we put into our body and uh, what we're exposed to in the environment. And there's ways we can go expose our body in a water we drink as well as the environment to fix this problem so we're not likely to sludge uh, in response to all these things we're exposed to now in contemporary society. This slide here describes, shows pictorially, really briefly, what really uh, zeta really is. Zeta is kind of an electrical charge around all form particles. It's called the slipping plane, and it's kind of like having a force field around any piece of mass that actually, by virtue of that force field, it actually serves to repel itself from other uh, substances or particles around it. So by example, uh, if uh, you have two magnets and they're of the same charge, they want to repel each other. So all the red blood cells in the body, and we'll see them in some of the slides we show you later on in this DVD, that they have this field around them electrically that helps keep them repelled together. That is the cardinal issue of being in wellness. Not one infant person born in this world not exposed to anything has any of these blood cells coming together because being held apart in suspension, and it's called a colloidal suspension in blood flow, allows these things to move smoothly through, uh, through the tubes, the small tubes they have to get through drop down the electrical static charge around these particles and they start clumping together and clumping together and, and clumps and clots and, and, and con concretions of, uh, of particles. It's hard to move concretions through small pipes designed to only handle one red blood cell going through a single file at a time. And this is part of the problem with the sludging of the blood, especially in areas where you have pipes come down and do a complete turn. You've got this kink in the pipe going this way. You can get single cells going down around that corner, no problem. But because of gravity and how the pipes are formed up, you start clumping things together because they lose the electrical charge force field around them, and they get stuck in the bottom of the pipe, and they can't get around there. And all tissue perfused by that can also be susceptible to anoxia, lack of oxygen, hypoxia, low oxygen, ischemia, lack of oxygen delivery, and these are all words that we also use to describe stroke, and these are strokes. Again, here's zeta potential again. So zeta is where this, the two, you see the two double lines coming at you here on the outside. It's the outer slipstream area of electrical charge around it. In, in chemistry, and physics, we call this the valence, the outer electrical charge around particles. And you can have a plus one, a plus two, a plus three. And from the point of view of human health and wellness and avoiding this blood sledging problem, which is causing a lot of the things we're talking about, uh, it's important to be more towards the negative side in this charge, not the positive. Things we're doing in our environment, more specifically the aluminum we we put in these uh, complex, these vaccines with, it, it has 64 times the clotting power than uh, uh, entities that are not positively charged like this. And this is where the problem is. It's not really the infectious disease. It's the, uh, the way we've sort of messed around with Zeta and the immune system by mass. And we'll explain those both. This next slide here as well is just basically ripping apart one blood vessel so you see what it looks like. The inside parts have the inside lining of it and the individual cells come together like scales on a fish. They, they create, create a solid inner, inner structure like the inside of a garden hose. All the inside cells coming together, they lock up and they create a, a formed solid structure. Well, potentially solid. There are potential spaces between cells, kind of like the scales on a fish. And the, these 
create tubes through which everything can flow, including the plasma. But this, the cells are held tight together, but they can be bent out a bit and allow, to allow certain substances and fluids to squeeze through them. And if you increase the pressure too much, then you actually have leaking through these small vessels, and we call that edema in medicine, or we call it leaky gut syndrome when these problems are happening to the gut, because the fluids can actually squeeze out uh, through the spaces between these individual junctions of cells, because all these individual cells create a formed tube, and those cells can be pulled apart or even held tightly together based on uh, many functions, not, not just uh, chemical and electrical, but also structural and biomechanically by what's in the tissue and fluid around it, like a basket pushing down or pulling it apart. And uh, when I punch you in the arm and the tissue's got to repair itself, the vessels become a little bit more open and let uh, the white blood cells get out of the area and the fluid spills in the area, you have that swelling. While swelling doesn't just happen on your arm, it happens in any damaged tissue. It's part of the repair process. And the repair process for healing, unfortunately, for all of us, has been derailed as a function of all these things we've been exposed to in the environment, including, unfortunately, the, the vaccines that's currently created. And when you do that and you damage different organ systems, you impair the body's ability to go heal itself because the repair mechanisms rely on signals that have to be in a certain harmony. And if the harmony is not there, it requires all organs to be working in concert together, then we cannot uh, fix and heal tissue the way our bodies were created to do and that's what we're calling disease these days and that's what we're giving drugs to to go fix symptoms um, symptoms do nothing get down to the cause if you find the root cause common denominator for everything take care of that all this other stuff goes away whether I cut you whether I burn you whether I drop a car on your leg these are all different causes of damage to your tissue irrespective of the cause of the damage your body will fix that tissue exactly the same way and it just stands to reason that uh, irrespective of the trigger that caused damage to our bodies, that uh, we're having disease and disorder, there must be some common mechanism of tissue repair, and there may be some common mechanism of causing disease. And we believe we've got that understood now in terms of mass and zeta as two critical parts that we've missed in Western medicine. And now that we find there's a common denominator, and no matter what the trigger is for many diseases that actually is leading to disease, um, it's a one-stop shop there as well to prevent, uh, give or take. However, uh, to fix the damage already done uh, is more of a complicated process to do because you're dealing with fixing the whole multi system. But knowing what the cause is gives you the idea for rational interventions and recovery and targeted treatments looking at the whole system as a whole. And uh, we're going to get to that. And in the new year, we're going to start seeing how we can recover some of these people who cannot speak and have all these uh, health problems and see if we can't do it the right way. And none of this involves pharmaceuticals. Surprisingly, naturally, it can be done when you know it's a natural problem.